Hi YouTube, this is a review of the uh, Rolex Daytona 116523 in steel and gold. Now this watch is not brand new, so this is not an unboxing, but I uh, thought it would be good to show you the whole package as well as the watch. So what we have here is the outer box of the uh, Daytona. I shall remove the cardboard outer box. It has a Rolex logo on top, as you can see over here. Now, there is a flap that flaps down over here and with a Rolex logo and uh, namesake. And uh, there is a little plastic protecting over here to prevent the uh, leather from sticking together. And what we have over here is essentially a, a green box that is, has a leather center portion and a nice gold Rolex emblem over here. Now do take note that not the entire box is made of leather. Only this little portion over here is leather bound. The rest is vinyl. Right. But it's pretty nice and sturdy nonetheless. Now I shall open the box. What you see here is the inside of the box. As you can see, the inside of the box is also protected by this plastic to prevent the two layers from sticking together. All right. And uh, the usual Rolex tags are given. It's the green tag. And what we have here is the chronometer tag. It says official this certified Swiss chronometer. And we have here Rolex Watch Company Limited, Geneva Bean. And it's a pretty nice tag with a green and beige hanger. And they also return you your little pouch of extra links over here. And uh, on the top end of the box, there is a little slot where you can find uh, the leather pouch that holds the Rolex card. Now this is made of leather and it's uh, nicely stitched together in green stitches. All right. This is the back of the pouch and uh, this is the front of the pouch. Now I've covered the serial number for obvious reasons. So the card will state the uh, model number as well as the serial number and the model right and it attests itself to be a chronometer which is in the Swiss or French I think and this is where the official Rolex retailer details are for me I'm based in Singapore so I bought this in, in the hourglass in Singapore right so this is the International Guarantee and Chronometer Certificate in one, as you can see. So I shall put this back, and in the back of the pouch, you'll be given a service guarantee of sorts in chronometer. Certificate. Essentially, it is to translate the words on the card into your native language all right because as I mentioned all the wordings on the card are in French I shall put this back okay. and also given is a little manual Daytona little manual to give the instructions for the owner on how to operate the watch itself. All right. So there's some little details about the movement and how to use the push pieces and what all the various functions are. It's essentially an idiot-proof guide. 
which most enthusiasts, I believe, should know how to use. Anyway, sorry about that. All right, now we shall look at the watch itself. Now what we have here is a little cushion that holds the watch. As you can see, it's made out of a tooth-shaped cushion, which is made of suede, and uh, it's pretty sturdy and uh, looks of good quality. And uh, the Daytona itself, um, it's not brand new like I mentioned, but it's pretty scratched up already. But uh, this is what they call the, uh, the, the sort of like the panda dial with the blue dial and the sub dials in the uh, ringed with a gold frame and the numerals in Arabic numerals with the 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10 and 11 so it is quite a dashing little watch and a little bit different from the traditional uh, beta numerals Rolex Daytona that we are used to but this particular dial is unique to the Daytona in half gold and full gold so um, it is not available in steel this dial which I kind of like because as you can see it adds a little sporty touch to the watch and uh, it has got red sub dial hands that are really cool it gives the watch a sporty look and uh, well overall it looks pretty good Another thing you notice about the Daytona is the sides of the watch. The sides of the watch are actually curved, as you can see. Unlike some other sports watches whose sides are flat, the Daytona side is actually curved, just like the Datejust. And if I'm not mistaken, the Yacht Master also has a curved side, or rather a, a convex side which is pretty cool now I shall remove the watch itself this is the bracelet of the watch as you can see it is a, a new kind of clasp that Rolex has it looks pretty cool pretty good your finger actually catches onto this little Rolex coronet which you can pull to open and unlike the previous uh, sports watches, the latest bracelets, there is, it is closed not by force contact, but by a little pin over here, if you can see. Now this little tiny pin is a push pin, such that when you close this in, you will depress the little push pin and it closes in very elegantly and very silently. All right. So let's take a look at the bracelet itself. If you open the bracelet, you will see that the gold, the bracelet center link, is partly made of solid gold, as you can see over here. The gold center piece is made of a solid piece of gold, but this center piece is not made of solid piece of gold. It is pressed on. Let me explain to you what I mean. If you look at the back, it is in full stainless steel. It is not a solid piece of gold in the center, but this little piece of gold over here is added on to the center of this bracelet extension clasp. All right, as you can see from the back, it is in steel, and the front is gold. It's not gold plated, but there is a thin piece of gold stuck over here which differs from this piece which has a solid piece of gold stuck over here All right. now the same applies for the opening clasp as you can see on top is made of gold but at the bottom it is not so this piece of gold is attached to the top of the opener as you can see over here. All right. Now I have no idea why Rolex does it this way, but I suppose it is for security, for strength, for structural reasons. 
for if they put a solid piece of gold over here it would weaken the overall structure of the glass opener so they would rather just make it full steel and add on a solid piece of gold on top over here right now a little bit on the bracelet of course all the links are solid solid end links solid center links and it feels pretty heavy and solid it feels very robust when you hold it in your hands and the push pieces of course you will not be able to operate it at all if it's screwed in you would have to unscrew the push pieces in order to use it let me show you how it's done Now that I've unscrewed the push piece, let me push it in to start the chronograph second hand. Oops, sorry, it's not wound, so it's not moving. Sorry about that. But essentially, when you push this piece, the watch should move. What I'm doing now is screwing it in, again, to ensure water resistance. Okay, now I shall be putting this back. So this is a little short review, quick review of the Daytona and I paid around 17 thousand Singapore dollars for this watch back in 2010 and I believe it cost more than 20,000 right now so um, I would say I got a pretty good deal and uh, it is it is a good watch I would say one that is uh, served me well and I hope that you've enjoyed this review and uh, do stay tuned for more reviews and uh, have a good day ciao